why don't we just uh, say what the product would be from this? Let's not, um, we're low on time, so let's not go through the whole mechanism. What would be the product here? So what functional group would that be? Acid. And what would be the other product? An amine. In fact, it would be ammonia. Oh. Right? OK, because we're going to use hydrolysis to break this bond. We're using hydrolysis to break this bond, this amide bond. And we know that we take the OH, and that replaces the L group. Originally, this was water attacking, but remember, after the water attacks, it deprotonates. So that just leaves us with an OH. And eventually, this leaving group is going to be protonated. And that leaves us with this. Um, so this is actually maybe not an amine. It's just ammonia. This is just NH3. This is the simplest, uh, maybe, amine, in a sense. It's so simple, I don't know if you can call it an amine. Um, but that will give us this amine uh, over here. Um, you should easily be able to go through the mechanism because we've already done acid catalyzed hydrolyses. So it would be similar to the hydrolyses that we've done previously. All right. Um, and, and it would be important to see then if you wanted to, uh, remember, this is why this is called a carboxylic acid derivative. Because when you hydrolyze it, it gives you a carboxylic acid. So that's one thing that amides do that's similar to these other things over here. By the way, that's why I don't really like writing carboxylic acids in the table because it makes it seem like you can't go from here to here. And that's the one thing you can do. You can go from an amide to a carboxylic acid with hydrolysis. So even though in some ways this has similar reactivity to an ester, there is one difference in the sense that you can hydrolyze an amide and make a carboxylic acid. But we're not quite done here. All right, um, so uh, what were we saying? What type of functional group is this? Carboxylic acid, and we need to ask ourselves we're in acidic conditions, so we're cool, right? Yes, you're right. We are cool. Very cool. All right. So yeah, we're uh, totally cool at this point. Um, however, then I should mention something else. Let's look at this amine here. Amines are bases. Amines are bases. They're not very strong bases, but they are bases because they have a lone pair. So that's going to be important for the remaining weeks of the course. So not bad. <laughs> so amines are bases. So just like a carboxylic acid has two forms, an amine has two forms. An amine has the regular form and the protonated form. So anytime you produce an amine, you have to ask, which of these should I end up with? Should I end up with the regular amine or the protonated amine? And in this case, we're under acidic conditions. So in this case, um, we should end up with this protonated form. So. These would be our products. Uh, you'll, you'll be seeing a bunch of examples of this in this homework, and then especially in the homework afterwards. And I mean, you had said before, it can't form an eastern anhydride. That's why you said you didn't like to link, uh, sorry, ester. That's right. You can't go to make esters. You can't do any of those, but right. you can make carboxylic acid through By hydrolysis. hydrolysis. That's right. Perhaps it can do other things, but we'll talk about it later. You can reduce this with lithium aluminum hydride, but we'll have to talk about okay. that next time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so we'll have to do, go over reductions in the future. All right, uh, this is very important. This is an amide bond, right? Uh, this is also a peptide bond. This is the kind of bond that connects amino acids to each other. Amino acids are connected by peptide bonds. So in a week or two, when you do proteins, you're going to be doing tons of hydrolyses of these types of bonds. So uh, this reaction is going to be very important uh, on the, this homework, but also on the next homework. All right, so uh, if you've got this, we'll just squeeze in uh, one more thing. So this was our acid-catalyzed hydrolysis here. Now, uh, I shouldn't say, I think both of these reactions need heat. These hydrolyses need heat. NH2 Two. H3. So both uh, these hydrolyses need heat because, again, we're starting with something that's very unreactive. The other hydrolyses maybe don't need heat because they're starting with more reactive. All right, now we're not going to go through the whole mechanism. Let's just say what the product is going to be. Carboxylic acid and NH3. Where did this OH come from? Well, we could say it came from this part of the water. And where did this new hydrogen come from? Well, we might say it came from this part of the water. 
So this would be a base catalyzed hydrolysis. I know you kind of touched on it before, but I would think that the OH minus would attack, not the H2O. Yeah, uh, it, it, it does, really. But you could think of it as, first the OH minus, you might think, deprotonates this guy right, so and turns it into an OH minus, well, when you and have then water, this attacks. You have, H2, you have OH minus. And That's right. OH minus. OH minus is just deprotonated water. So we still think of this as a hydrolysis. Even though it's the hydroxide that's attacking, we think of that as a deprotonated water that's attacking. So we're still splitting this up with water. All right, the last thing I wanted to get into, though, is these are not the, the correct final products. Oh. Which of these yeah. is wrong? The carboxylic acid. Because now we're in basic conditions. So these are our final products. The amine is fine. The amine is not going to protonate because these are basic conditions, but the carboxylic acid has to deprotonate. It will still form first the carboxylic acid, and just then we have to take off the hydrogen to form the carboxylate. Yeah, that would be the best way to do it. That's right. Because you, you don't just go straight to the carboxylate. Yeah, yeah. you're correct. So we, we had, didn't have time to go through the whole mechanism, but we saw something similar previously. That's right. So these will be our final products. So we weren't trying to show the mechanism here, just trying to predict the products. So here would be the products from an acid catalyzed amide hydrolysis, and here would be the uh, the product from a base catalyzed amide hydrolysis. So you have to make sure you're getting the right form of the amine and the acid. So we went through some really important material today. Um, before you even do the problem set, I would recommend trying to just redo the examples we did and make sure those mechanisms are very clear in your mind. Um, and try to see, again, how most of these mechanisms are just variations on each other. Um, they, they're all very similar, except that there's different patterns of protonation and deprotonation. You also have to get trying to get clear in your mind about when you need to protonate and deprotonate. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.